Hello, you're listening to eBible Fellowship's new open form excerpts, and now we present the following excerpt. Welcome to our new open form program. Please go ahead with your call. Hi, Chris. Can you go to um, Deuteronomy 19:14? All right, Deuteronomy 19 and verse 14. Thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark, which they of old time have set in thine inheritance, which thou shalt inherit in the land that Jehovah thy God giveth thee to possess it. Can you also go to Proverbs 23.10? Proverbs 23, verse 10. Remove not the old landmark and enter not into the fields of the fatherless. Uh, what is the spiritual meaning for landmarks? A landmark would be a boundary marker. See how it says in in Deuteronomy, you shall not remove your neighbor's landmark. And remember, when God gave Israel the land, it was given to them by lot. It was assigned by lot. And we know when the lot is cast, the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. So God determined, okay, for this tribe of Judah, they will get this piece of land and this tribe will get that piece of land. And within each tribe, well, I don't know if the Bible goes into detail how they did that, but it would not be surprising or unusual if they also apportioned by lot. However it was done, whether by lot or, or it was inheritance. Inheritance, and remember there was Naboth, Naboth who had a vineyard, that was near um, King Ahab, or near against his palace. I think it's in 1 Kings 21. 21. Thank you. 1 Kings 21 and verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. And Ahab wanted it. And in verse 2, he's offering to buy it. But in verse 3, Naboth said to Ahab, Jehovah forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And then Ahab got depressed about it. And that's when Jezebel said, I'll give you, I'll give you the vineyard. And, and she did wickedly and had men of a city falsely accuse Naboth of uh, blaspheming God and the king. And then they, I think they stoned him to death. And then Ahab rose up when he heard about it to seize the vineyard, to seize the vineyard. Now Naboth there is a type of Christ from everything from being the owner of the vineyard, like God's the owner of the vineyard, to being falsely accused by false witnesses, two, two sons of Belial who falsely accused him and being put to death. So we can see that, but it was his inheritance, his family's inheritance. And so here, thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark, which they of old time have set in thine inheritance, which thou shalt inherit in the land that Jehovah thy God giveth thee to possess it. So it really has to do the inheritance of the Jews, the inheritance of within the land of Canaan, which the whole land was given for an inheritance to Abraham and to his seed. And we know that also, in the first instance, points to Christ, seed singular. So it was Christ's inheritance, and all the elect in Christ were, are counted for the seed. And therefore, this has to do with the salvation of the elect of God, and the portion that has been given them by lot, by God's disposing his determinate choice or counsel in eternity past, where he predestinated us to receive it. And, and so it's an ancient landmark that sets the boundary of the kingdom of heaven, and it would have full identification with the word of God as boundary markers, because if you remove your neighbor's landmark, it, it's, I think it would tie into 
basically a command to teach the gospel faithfully. Teach the gospel truly and faithfully. And when you do so, then you're respecting your neighbor's landmark because God will bless that gospel. He'll save his people who will remain, you know, they'll, they'll be within that allotted portion of the kingdom of heaven that Canaan represents. And if you teach a false gospel, if you're going beyond the boundary markers of the law of God, the word of God, you're trespassing and also in removing the landmark. Of course, we know that there's a great many professed Christians that are not true Christians that were never chosen or elected to salvation. But I think God would use that figure that it's as though, it's as though because the gospel that was proclaimed to them was a false gospel, and so it brought them or it ruined their boundary markers, it, it ruined their inheritance, and I think that's the idea. Proverbs 23, 10, okay. remove not the old landmark and enter not into the fields of the fatherless. Yeah, and, and the fatherless would point to the elect also. So this would be a command to keep the ancient boundary markers that the Word of God lays out. That, that would be how to obey it and follow it and it would tie into the Alex portion. Thanks for watching and be on the lookout for more new open forum excerpts that will be added periodically.